Today's video is sponsored by Team Group and their T-Force Vulkan SSD. The Vulkan SSD is a great choice for PC users who want to have a snappy experience with reduced loading times while keeping things subtle and RGB free. With the Vulkan SSD, the operating system and in-game loading times are reduced significantly compared to a traditional hard drive, increasing the amount of time you spend using your PC instead of waiting for things to load up. For those of you who prefer to have the rainbow effect rather than keeping things minimal, the T-Force Delta Series SSDs might be the right choice for you. To learn more about Team Group's SSD lineup, follow the link in the video description. Recently, I was asked by a friend of mine to help him with his PC upgrade, in which, at the time, he was rocking an i3-4130 and 8GB of RAM with no graphics card. Unfortunately, his budget was a bit tight, so we had to cut corners, and after a little bit of talking, we decided to go with an i7-4790 and 16 gigabytes of memory. For the graphics card, we settled with the GTX 760, which might not be a very powerful GPU, but it is definitely much better than having none at all, and he can easily upgrade it at any time. Since he already had all the other components, this is all we had to buy, and in total we spent about $220. Yet, building this PC from scratch on the used market with all the other components such as the motherboard, power supply, storage, and case would cost about $475. Of course, prices may vary depending on your country, which isn't a whole lot of money. Now, we will talk about the details and the pricing of each component towards the end of the video, so let's jump in and have a look at how capable this build is. For the specs, like I said, we have an i7-4790, an MSI B85M gaming motherboard, 16GB of DDR3 1600MHz memory, and a 4GB GTX 760 graphics card. For the power supply and storage, I used my own parts that I use for testing, which are a 700W FSB Hydro power supply, a Kingston UV300 for the operating system, and the T-Force Vulcan for the games. Okay, so now let's see how this build performs, and keep in mind that in today's video we're only going to look at how the i7 performs paired with the GTX 760. So if you're interested in the full review of the i7-4790, where I'm going to pair it with a GTX 1070, be sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications. Alright, so starting off we have PUBG, which doesn't run too bad at 1080p. Obviously we're GPU bound, so upgrading the graphics card would significantly increase the frame rate, but until then the game is totally playable, with the frame rate rarely dipping below 60fps. I also tried lowering the resolution to 900p, which noticeably improves the frame rate. Next up we have Battlefield 5, and it might seem like the graphics card isn't the reason why we're getting low frames, since it never gets fully utilized, but it is still the main source of bottleneck. At 1080p the game does run, but for the most part we're stuck between 35 to 45 frames. Dropping the resolution to 900p does increase the frame rate by about 10 fps, making the game a bit more playable. Take this and use it. <laughs> Moving on, we have Star Wars Fallen Order, which our build handles just fine. Sure, it is not a silky smooth experience and the frame rate does drop to low 40s from time to time, but since this is not a competitive multiplayer title, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Once again, we're mostly GPU bound here, so reducing the resolution does noticeably improve the performance.
Next on the list we have Need for Speed Heat, and unfortunately it doesn't run all that well on this build because of, you guessed it, our graphics card. At 1080p, depending on the intensity of the situation, the frame rate tends to range between 25 to 40 frames, not to mention the extremely messy frame time, which makes the game feel choppy. So if you want to have a somewhat playable experience, you're gonna need to reduce the resolution to 900p or lower. For our final game, we have Apex Legends, and at this point, I don't think I have to mention the reason we're getting such low frames. At 1080p, the frame rate stays below 45 FPS for the most part, with frequent dips below 30s, and while I was able to land a few shots here and there, unfortunately the game is far from playable. Even at 900p, I had dips below 35 frames, so unless you're ready to play at 720p or lower, and even then I doubt that things are gonna get much better, I wouldn't bother downloading this game. Incoming care package. Okay, so now let's have a look at the pricing and alternative options that we have to see whether spending $475 to build a used PC like this from scratch is worth it at all. So, for just about $30 to $40 more, you can build yourself a PC with a Ryzen 5 2600, by the way, I have a comparison coming soon, or you can go for the 10th gen i3, both of which are much better choices compared to the i7-4790 build. Don't forget that by going with Ryzen or the 10th gen Intel platforms, not only are you going to have a much better upgrade path, which is basically non-existent if you go with the 4th gen i7, but you're also less likely to have reliability issues since these platforms are much newer. So I'd say only go for this setup if you find the CPU and the board, or maybe even the whole PC, for a good deal. Otherwise, it's simply not worth it. I will leave a link for every component that you saw on this list in the description, and I would really appreciate if you could use the provided Amazon affiliate links, since using them means supporting my work. Finally, I think overall this is still a pretty capable build if your goal isn't to play the latest and greatest games. There are hundreds of thousands of titles that this PC won't have any issues running, and if you use a more powerful graphics card with this setup, which is what we're going to be doing in our next video, it's going to be able to handle most modern games out there. Or is it? Well, subscribe and turn on the notifications to find out. Anyways, that's been it. Feel free to join my Discord and follow me on social media. Links are down below. I have more videos coming soon. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next one.